Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about sine and cosine. Uh, we just learned about cosine, and then we're going to compare the two. As you can see on this graph here, the cosine values are coming from the x coordinate. So you can see that it is the uh, horizontal distance from the center, while the sine values are coming from the y coordinate, which is the vertical distance from the center. As they're moving along, you can see that they start to kind of take the same shape. That's because they are moving in the same pattern. Uh, they just get to those values at different points. You can see that they don't have the same values at the same time. One of the biggest questions we then ask is how can we tell the difference between the two? So the way that we spot, to be honest, there isn't really one. Anytime, I'm not spelling difference right, anytime, um, you are looking at one of these kinds of graphs, you could write a sine function or you could write a cosine function. Um, the best thing to do is think about the five point method. So think about if you were on a unit circle, okay, you start here and you go to each quadrant. So that's one point, two points, three points, four points, and then five points to get back to where you started. So if we look at this function here, if I start right here, Okay, and I go one, two, three, four, five. Notice I'm hitting the high point, the low point, and the ones directly in the middle. And that comes from the high point, the low point, and the middle. So this would look like a sine graph. One of the ways I remember what a sine graph looks like is that it kind of mimics more of an S type shape. Now, I could just as easily have picked a different place to start. Now, I can really pick any place to start, but again, I want to start at the top, the bottom, or the middle, the maximum, the minimum, or the middle. And that goes back to my unit circle, where I'm either starting at the highest value, the lowest value, or the middle values. If I instead started here at this maximum, I hit the middle, that's my second point, minimum, middle, maximum, now it makes a cosine shape. So it takes a cosine shape and cosine's parent function kind of looks more like a C shape. So both of those um, are available there. Now, what if you started at a different spot and it maybe looked a little different? What we're gonna get into in the coming days is transformations of these two functions. So if you started here, you would wind up going down first, then up to the middle and then back to the top. So that doesn't look exactly, oh wait, that's only four, one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five, that might not look exactly like a sine graph to you, but it could be the translation of a sine graph or the reflection of a sine graph. Um, if this function kept going, at some point I can maybe see, you started here, the reflection of a cosine graph. So again, anytime you see one of these sinusoidal functions, there's actually lots and lots and lots of different ways you could write the equation, um, and it always belongs to both function families, sine and cosine.